sometimes having past experience of something to try and guide you forward in the content that you make isn't always the advantage that you expect it to be, especially when a new remake of a game comes out and it turns out that some of the old secrets and rewards and unlocks have been changed in the way that you get them, perhaps unexpectedly. Today that's what we're here to talk about because there's been a lot of changes to Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp compared to the first release of the games 20 some odd years ago and uh, well, I ran into that exact issue when I released my How to Recruit Kanbei and Sonya video yesterday. So, as of the release of that video and the 24 hours or so since then, it has come to my attention and the attention of the community at large that most, if not all, of those unlock requirements for the old COs and missions and things like that have been removed or changed. And we're going to talk about what those are and uh, correct my mistake, so please watch on. Hello everyone, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman, and yes, my previous video is literally pointless. It's a shame to learn, but these things happen. Uh, the weird thing is that when I went through to unlock Kanbei and Sonya, I did the missions as I needed to, met the requirements that I needed to, so assumed that I had unlocked them because I did things right, just like in the original release of Advance Wars 1. And uh, it was only once I got to Green Earth and didn't complete the objectives to recruit Eagle and Drake and still got Eagle and Drake that it came to my attention that something might be off. So, for those of you who aren't in the know, essentially in Advance Wars 1, the various CEOs that weren't of Orange Star had specific unlock requirements that you needed to meet in order to get them. As I covered in my video for Kanbei and Sonya, you had to beat Kanbei's maps in a certain number of turns. Then you had to go defeat Sonya with each of the three Orange Star CEOs, etc., etc. Then in Green Earth, you had to fight all the battles with, say, Andy to get Drake or Sami to get Eagle, different stuff like that. And in doing these objectives, you would also unlock certain CEOs for the final battle, literally called the final battle, and you would be locked into those choices. None of that is the case anymore. As far as I'm aware, these are the changes that have occurred. The CEOs Olaf, Grit, Kanbei, Sonya, Eagle, and Drake, all who had previously required specific actions to unlock, are now just something you'll get as part of the storyline. You still have to go and buy them in the shop, but they will be unlocked for you to go buy whenever it is that you want to, and that will make them available for use in things like the War Room and in Versus Mode, online, all that type of stuff. Very much simplified. For the final battle, you're just given the option to use any of the COs from the campaign. You seem to be locked into Andy for Orange Star, but beyond that, you get the pick of the litter. I could have chosen Grit, Olaf, Kanbei, Sonya, Max, Sammy, Drake, Eagle, the whole kit and caboodle. So, uh, it's nice that that's available because it could kind of be rough if you didn't know what you were doing and suddenly you wound up with... COs that weren't very complimentary for each other, who you weren't very comfortable using in the final battle, which is quite tough. So uh, I, that's an understandable change. Uh, finally, one of the other changes that I know of is the actual final secret mission, Rivals, where you would be battling uh, Eagle with Andy, has been changed. It still exists. People were thinking that it wasn't still in the game, but it is. You just have to go through and beat all of the various missions in the campaign, including the branching paths, and then rivals will be unlocked. Now, how do you go through and do all those branching paths? Well, once you finish the campaign for the first time, all of the previous missions that you skipped over, like, say, in a mission where you have to battle Drake and you have the option to pick Andy, Sammy, or Max, and you pick one and then the other two missions go away, those missions will be back. So you can go back through, you can finish all of the different branching story paths, experience the different battles with different COs, all that type of stuff. And once you do all of that, then rivals will become available to you. Now I know there are probably some other changes as well. I'm not sure what goes into recruiting, say, Nell or Sturm, things like that. This is a quick cut in actually, as, as I was editing this video, I found out how it is that you recruit Nell, since I just mentioned her. Uh, compared to in the original Advance Wars, where you had to go through and have all the characters unlocked, complete the advance campaign, all that type of stuff to get Nell. Now, 
you just have to 100% the normal campaign. That's it. And then you'll be able to unlock Nell. So again, there's changes all over the place. Most of them seem to have been made to make the unlocks a fair bit easier and a fair bit more respectful of your time, which I can't really complain with. So, but again, cutting back to uh, past me, take it away past me. If there are other secrets that we have yet to encounter, I'm not sure, I'll be keeping my eyes peeled, but at the very least, those are the changes that I know of. And I wanted to talk about it really quick because I mean, I just put out a video that was not like ill-intentioned or that wasn't going to like harm anyone in the fact that it was incorrect but it was still incorrect and i don't like to be incorrect i like to make sure that the information i'm putting out there is right so uh as far as how i feel about these changes i mean i think it's fine it might have made sense in advance wars one where you had a standalone game and they wanted to have as much replay value in it as possible they wanted to give people things to discover it was before the age of the internet Word of mouth was a lot of times the only way to learn about games unless you had an official strategy guide, if one even existed. So it was a little bit more of a magical experience to suddenly be like, oh my god, I was able to recruit Eagle. He's so cool, I've been playing this game for years, he's always been such a badass character, but I never knew how to get him. Now I can use him against my friends, or you know, you're playing against your friends, like, wait, you have Kanbei? How did you get him? That's so cool, like, he's so strong, I want to be able to use Kanbei. And then having to go back through and replay the campaign, do the specific challenging things that you needed to do, especially when we were younger, they were quite tough battles. And then you would be able to unlock those characters. Now, when you've got Advance Wars 1 and 2 bundled into one game, we have the modern internet available to us. There's online, not matchmaking, but there's online multiplayer. It stands to reason that these characters are so much easier to recruit. Either you're a veteran of the series and you may be playing the campaigns for nostalgia, but you probably want to play against other people. It'll be a lot easier to go through and get all of the COs unlocked. Or if you're a newcomer to the series, you probably wouldn't spend that much time muddling through it on your own and instead would look up a guide on YouTube or a forum or even just a news article talking about how to get them and just do it that way. And now it's just saves everyone some time. So uh, I don't think it's a particular problem that the COs are unlocked this way. Uh, as far as who you have for the final campaign, I think that's fine too. Like, it's cool that your actions throughout the campaign would influence who you got to use in the final battle. But again, if you messed something up, either out of just not knowing that something existed or you just made a flub somewhere along the way and now you're stuck with a CO you don't want to use, that kind of sucks because then if you want to change it, you'd have to go through the whole campaign again. Now, you get to experiment. You're like, well, okay, maybe having a combination of Sammy and Grit with Andy didn't work too well. All right, well, let me back out and I'll pick some different COs and you just get to play with it a little bit more. And I think that's cool because it's such a fun final mission. The battles against Sturm are a ton of fun. It would be a shame to see that mired by bad choices or being stuck with bad choices that you aren't comfortable with. Finally, as far as Rivals is concerned, I think that's probably unequivocally the best change here. It, it would have been terrible if they just took Rivals out. It's an iconic mission in the series. I think there's plenty of people who are going to enjoy playing it, especially in the advanced campaign where it's going to be brutally difficult. But having it so that it's a mission that you only get access to once you've finished all other missions, allowing you to have finished the campaign, instead of getting stuck in what is pretty unequivocally the hardest map in the game, if you just happen to unlock the right characters the way it was in Advance Wars 1, the original release. I think that's just good. Like, if you get stuck on Rivals and you're not actually able to finish the campaign and get the various unlocks as a result, that sucks, man. Like, that just, that's rough. Again, back in the day, it was a different time. There was some prestige involved in, oh, I beat Rivals, and your friend's like, oh my god, how'd you do it? But again, now in the era of the internet with people being always online, talking to each other, sharing strategies, all that type of stuff, it wouldn't have that same level of prestige anyway. So having it be a secret final mission that you get as a reward for completing all other missions, I think that's cool. And it allows them to still have it in the game without potentially bricking someone's run who wasn't expecting it. So I think all of these changes are perfectly acceptable. If there are other changes, I'm not aware of them yet, and if you guys know what they are, by all means, please fill me in in the comments. Uh, I would love to know what there is to find, if, what there is to not find, potentially. And uh, if there's any changes like that in Advance Wars 2 as well, I will try to highlight them as I play through that. I have not started the Advance Wars 2 campaign yet, but I will be soon. So, 
yeah, just wanted to put this out here to correct my previous mistake, make it known that, um, yeah, you don't have to go out of your way to get these characters anymore. You will just get access to them, and I think that's pretty awesome. But I'm going to wrap this one up here. Thank you all so much for watching. I do very much appreciate it. Maybe consider leaving a like or a sub on the video to help me feel a little bit better about putting out wrong information. That would be wonderful. Help me grow the channel. And until the next time, my name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. I hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.